Okay, so right now we're going to do a quick fit up. So we're going to put our handle in there. And this is just, you want something that's going to be nice and straight. So this is actually ground stock. This is a piece of half inch ground 1018. And we're going to fit this in place. And what we're going to do is, I know I'm probably going to have to take a little bit off of this because I rounded that measurement that I did first. So what we're going to do is just see if this binds at all with that bearing in there. So, all right, I can still feel a little bit of movement there. All right, right there it stops and I'm nice and loose. I can turn the shaft real easy and, but I still can need to tighten this down. So it's about where it was last time. That's about a quarter or an eighth of a turn. And now I'm binding. So that means I do have to take a little bit off of this. But since this bushing here is a little bit harder to chuck up, what I'm going to do is I am going to take it off of that gear. So what I'll do is I'll just put this back in the four jaw chuck real quick and face a little bit off of this edge here. Now, I'll, I'll do a quick measurement and see how much I actually have to take off. It shouldn't be too much. I think I was over when I measured my uh, original thing. I think I rounded up about three or four thousand, so probably about five off of this. But I'll confirm that and then just go take that and we'll be right back here. Okay, so now we're going to do a fit up and make sure everything is all set. So, I already did one fit up off camera and determined that the fit between this end of the bushing and the gear here was a little too tight, which I wasn't surprised because when we measured for this length here, we rounded up. So I had to take a little bit off of this face. So I, I measured it, figured out I had to take between four and five thousandths off of, the, off of this face, and I just did that on the lathe now. So we should be pretty good. So we're going to take our screw here and just temporarily fit it up. Now this fits pretty, pretty snug in there because we were able to turn this for a real tight fit. <clears throat> this is going to be the handle side that we're going to make. Now the fit on this is a little bit looser because we used a reamer so it's basically size on size so it's not as tight as here but we still, you can hear that suction fit. So this piece of bar stock right here is a 1018 ground rod so I know that it's 100% on size, half inch on size and it's nice and straight. You can pretty much use anything you want you just want to make sure it's as straight as possible and as on size as possible. So what we're going to do for the time being here to temporarily affix these two shafts because they're uh, kind of a sliding fit is all we're going to do is take some standard super glue here, pull it a little bit on a toothpick, and just put some on the shaft. And this should give us enough grip to be able to turn that gear by the by the shaft, but super glue is very easy to remove with a little bit of heat. So I'm just going to wait for that to grab. Okay, so we grab this pretty tight. What we're going to do is we are going to feed this in. And basically right now we're just testing fit up and getting some preliminary measurements. Alright, so we're right up against that face and we want to make sure that we're actually meshing with the gear in there, which feels like we are. Then we're going to take our bearing and put that on. And then we're going to take our bushing that we made. Okay. Just give it a quick little snug. I'm actually going to mark the top flat up here, 
just for later reference. And now we're going to make sure everything moves nice and feels the way we want to. All right, so that's nice and loose. It's easy to turn. Nothing's binding. I can turn it pretty much with one hand there. I mean, obviously, I'm just turning it by a little half-inch rod, so i got no real leverage on it. But everything feels good. Everything feels nice and tight. And I think that's where we're going to keep it. So if you need to trim off a little bit to get that fit a little bit better, go ahead and do that. Like I said, we were just rounding up on our on our measurements and yours may be a little bit different what I'm gonna do after the fact is I haven't really made up measurements for this yet I wanted to wait until they were done and then I'm gonna post those so you definitely want to make sure that you measure your own stuff so what we're gonna do right now is just so we have a reference is I'm just gonna mark where we end we don't have to be super critical with this we just want to get an idea of where we're going to end up so okay so we figured out the length here and what I figured it out to be is for me <clears throat> 8 inches 712 thousandths and how I figured that out was by taking the length that this shaft goes into this gear plus the width of the bearing, plus the length of our bushing, plus the width of the dial, plus 10,000, so we have enough room to be able to rotate that, plus the width of this handle here. And that's what I came up with. So the good thing is, is you, even if you screw up a little bit on these measurements, you have a little bit of a fudge factor because you can adjust the length that that rod goes into this gear by a little bit to make up if you screwed up. So, as I said, 8 inches 712 thousandths is what I came up with for my particular circumstances and I suggest that you guys measure yours. Now I measured this out by using the dial indicator mounted on the carriage which is right over here, you guys can't see it. So what we're going to do right now is just part that off at that length. I do need to slow the machine down. Also, if you have a, a four-jaw chuck, it'd be great for the rest of this work, or a collet chuck will be do beautifully. Make your life a lot easier with a collet chuck, actually. So all I'll do right now is get that little tit off of there and uh, I'll, I have a set of large calipers. I will actually measure this and see how close I came. <clears throat> so I did screw up <laughs> and here's where I, where I said good thing you have a little built-in fudge factor. Uh, this measurement here is wrong. I just took the measurement of the dial but I forgot to realize that I gotta put a nut on the other side of that. So, uh, I went back to the original piece, which is right here, and instead of 883 thousandths from the end here to this edge here is actually one inch. So I'm off by 117 thousandths, which just means that this isn't gonna go as deep into the gear blank, but we still have over an inch and three eighths of bite on it. So. My bad, but nothing that we can't overcome. Okay, so we have everything set up. I have my length set by my carriage. We're going to take this diameter here down to uh, 7 sixteenths from half inch. So um, I just made a little undercut there in the beginning just to test something real quick. But we're just going to take that down to 7 sixteenths of an inch. That will allow the hand wheel to fit on. Go ahead and take 50 thousandths. Check where 
we're at real quick. should be pretty close right there. Let me grab the handle. Right, we just want to go on there. So right now all I'm going to do is just polish that out. So we have a little bit in that corner anyway, but what we need to do anyway is we need to make an undercut right in that corner. Reason being is there's a radius on that tool and we want to make sure that that handle sits perfectly flush against that. So what I'm going to come into is right into that edge, turn the machine on there. Just the tiniest undercut there and what that's going to do is make sure that we have a nice perfect shoulder there to sit against. So I just need to get a little bit off that edge. I just had a little burr inside that hand wheel there, but you see we fit up nice and flat. So, Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take this down to 5 sixteenths and we got to thread it 5 sixteenths by uh, 18. That length of thread needs to be below this shoulder. So that way there, when we put this on, the nut draws up tight and tightens it into the shoulder. So for me, that's a quarter inch down. So I'm going to turn this down to 5 sixteenths by a quarter inch in length. And I have my carriage indicator here again. <clears throat> and we'll be going by that. Let me just double check and make sure I'm at my zero still. And I am. This should be about 400 thousandths here. And there's 250 thousandths and I want to double check myself here and make sure that that shoulder is below the one that's on here. And it looks to me to be below that looks below it to me so I continue with that so we should be right at about 400,000 so let me just double check yeah 403,000 okay
should be right around 350,000. Let's double check. 351. Should be around 320. Yep, 321. All right. And that should be the last cut. I just want to make sure. Yep. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is same as the other side. Is we're going to come in here and we're going to put in a relief. Right. A little bit more so we can nick that edge. Just make sure we get a nice square edge. And that's it there. There's our relief and our threads are gonna go on the top of that. So what I'm gonna do is just take this. I'm gonna knock that edge and we're just gonna thread it with a die. So let me grab a die. Okay, so we're just gonna thread this with a die just because it's so small. And uh, we just need something flat to start it, and I like using the side of one of those boring bar holders, even though this one, uh, I got this one in a lot with a bunch of other ones, and I haven't cleaned it up yet, but we have a nice flat surface on it. So, we're just going to start it. Go down until it stops. And there's our thread now. Okay, we're getting ready to set this up. Here's our threaded section. Here's the part we just finished. Still got a few more steps to go to, but we need to mark some stuff out. So you can see how nice and tight that is in there. Here is our bearing. Now you can remember I told you I made a mistake, but this is where built-in fudge factor comes from. So when I put this on with the bearing and then put the dial on, I don't know if you can tell, but that shoulder here is below this dial. We don't want that. We want that shoulder above the dial. We don't want to pinch the dial. We want the dial to free float. So that's not a huge thing. All we need to do is put the dial in here and then push up on this rod here, which will in turn push up on, push this one further into this gear, which will push our handle side up a little bit. So what we're gonna do, you can see it come up. So now we have a gap there. Now that gap doesn't need to be huge. Uh, that's a little on the large side there, so no big deal. We just put that back in. Uh, you can use feeler gauges, but about uh, about ten thousandths or so of movement. Like this, this is probably about that's uh, probably about fifteen or so. Um, that should be more than enough, because this whole dial will be floating on a bushing that's inside this so like I said we just want to make sure that when we tighten this down we don't pinch it all right so now that we got that pretty much set where we want it more or less what we need to do is two things and let me grab the old one 
Okay, so this is the old bushing and this is the old shaft. So you can see in this bushing that there's a hole all the way through and it's about so that's the vertical position there. This is the zero. That hole is kind of at this angle here. All right. And what that hole is or what this whole slot is right here, that lines up with an oil hole that's right in the top of the the cross slide. And that lines up with a relieved portion of that handrail screw. So what you do is you put oil in there and that oil kind of sits in that little groove. We need to drop that on the floor and we need to make that. So now we can mark it out pretty much from here. So you can see it doesn't have to be perfect. So all we're going to do is we're going to relieve from say about here and maybe down a little bit further about from here to about there. We're just going to relieve that little portion there. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't have to be very deep. We'll say about 100 to 125 thousandths at most. And all we're going to do is just use our scribe lines. We'll zero. That's actually more than enough. Okay, I'm actually going to switch out my tool for an opposite handed one and then we're going to come back up here so um, that should be more than enough it's just a little bit of an oil cavity it doesn't have to be super super deep okay so now we're going to drill that oil hole so a 964 drill bit seemed to be pretty good in there we're centered up in this direction by using the center finder so right now we're just going to basically eyeball the center of that little flat there That looks good right there. Now if we go slow enough, we shouldn't really have to center drill that, but if you want to, you can. That's all we're doing there. We can go ahead and deburr that after the fact. But okay, so I have this centered again. This is the gear, and the um, the threaded part is in there and set. And we're gonna drill this eighth inch for a eighth inch roll pin. So we're just gonna eyeball center in this direction here. That looks pretty good there. We're just going to go straight through.
Okay, we are through. What I'm gonna do is just get a file, get a small file on that bottom. Getting the burr off of that hole. And And now that is permanently fixed and it's not going to move. Okay, so now it's time to affix the handle side to that gear. Now, there's not much room in here to get a roll pin. You might be able to get it on this edge, but there's not much metal there. And I kind of didn't want to put one inside the actual uh, gear splines there. So what we're going to do is we are going to use Loctite. This is just the red permanent one. Now I know there is one that's specifically made for dowel pin fits. I believe it's green. I forget the number on it. But this, the permanent one, four threads. I've had good luck with it. This is actually what's holding the cross slide together on my 9 inch lathe from my modification on that one. So uh, all you need is just a little bit. Just like so. And as long as you, you're nice and degreased in there, give it a spin, push it all the way in, get all that air out. And that sucker will grab pretty quick. Now this stuff dries in the absence of air. So this stuff on the outside will actually remain pretty much liquid and you can just get it off with a towel. <clears throat> so you just take a towel. And uh, just wipe it off. And there you go, that's it. So now I just put that on. We're just going to let that sit for a few minutes and it should cure right up. Okay, so there's pretty much our part stack up. All together, I got a little bit of play in this and now we just need to make the little bushing that goes in here that will be sandwiched between the bearing that rides in this groove and the hand wheel so that'll be the subject of the next and last video in this series